We've got Thomas McManus with us joining us from London. He is a researcher at Queen Mary University of London and author of the report, Countdown to Annihilation, Genocide in Myanmar. And he led a field research team in Rakhine State. So perfectly placed, Thomas, to talk to us uh, through this. Um, I mean, the title of your report says it all, in my opinion, genocide. Are we actually, you, you, you believe we are heading down or actually already on that track? We're already looking at the genocide process. Um, uh, we outlined the, in the report how we see that process. We went to Rakhine State, interviewed um, hundreds of people, and we were able to track with what we found with the people we talked to, and, and I mean we talked to people from different groups, and we were able to check, track that the Rohingya are following through the steps of genocide. They're clear steps. They are first stigmatized, then they are physically harassed, mm -hmm. then isolated, so rounded up into camps or, or not allowed to move in their home villages. And then there's systematic weakening. There's systematic weakening. You remove health care, education, uh, the right to vote, the right to associate. Mm -hmm. And then when we left and and made this report in 2015, we felt that we were looking at the next stage, which is the annihilation, the stage of removing the Rohingya from the area for destroying the culture or for outright killing. And we made the claim that if there wasn't any intervention between now and, and, and two years ago, mm -hmm. then we would be in the exact position that we see now. Thomas, I've had a question from one of our viewers, uh, Peter, who's tweeted in, and he's just simply asked, will the international community ever help these desperate people? Now, neither of us can answer that, but what it does make me think of is, well, events like this in the past, and the amount of times the international community has said never again. They said never again after World War II. They said never again after Rwanda. Uh, Syria's been going on for six years as well. Why do you think the international community will wake up to the Rohingya issue? Well, I really, I really feel we're going to be entering into the never again territory soon and we're going to be having that conversation again um, in the months coming ahead. Um, and there's a few things that are, that are going on at the moment. We have the UN calling it ethnic cleansing. For me, this is a euphemism for genocide. This is a word that's used by politicians in order to avoid the legal obligations under the genocide treaty. There's a real reluctance to use the genocide word so that nobody has to do anything about it. Mm. Um, there, we also are seeing the UN Security Council being completely locked up. Um, as you reported, uh, by yeah. vetoes being threatened by both China and Russia, so there's no point to bringing anything there. There are no regional human rights courts. ASEAN has taken the view that they won't, don't want to interfere uh, in the sovereignty of their, the nation states who are members. And so there's very few avenues. One final question for you, uh, Thomas, if you can still hear me. It's another one from Twitter, Vicky, who's asked, what is the UN doing to stop the crisis instead of reporting statistics? But she goes on to ask, how can we as the public help? Now, it's a good question. Is it as simple as, you know, donating to aid agencies who are there? Are they all able to get in? Are they, are they asking for help? Yeah, the aid agencies are able to get in. Uh, they have to do so clandestinely uh, in, the, in the majority of the cases. But, but the easiest way is to focus on the aid agencies going into Bangladesh. And another way is to make this politically costly for your own governments to ignore. So you need to write to your own MP or your own representative uh, and make it difficult for them to ignore this. And hopefully they will escalate it uh, to, onto the world stage. Uh, it, time is running out now, so we, we really, the international community really needs to act very fast if we want to see any kind of let up on the suffering on, of the Rohingya people. Thomas McManus, I'm glad we could talk to you uh, about this and also get your answers to our, our viewer questions. Thank you.